All right, we're going to be learning about uh, optimization with linear program programming. So these are the content standards and the mathematical practices we'll be using. Previously, you've solved systems of linear inequalities by graphing, and now we're going to find the maximum and minimum values of a function over a region. And we're going to solve real-world optimization problems using linear programming. New vocabulary for today, linear programming, feasible region, bounded, unbounded, and optimize. Situations often occur in business in which a company hopes to either maximize profits or minimize cost, and many constraints need to be considered. These issues can often be addressed by the use of systems of inequalities in linear programming. Linear programming is a method for finding maximum and minimum values of a function over a given system of inequalities with each inequality representing a constraint. After the system is graphed and the vertices of the solution set, which is called the feasible region, are substituted into the function, you can determine the maximum or minimum value. So let's see what that means. The feasible region is the area that's enclosed by the polygon. It's bounded because it is enclosed by all three of these inequalities. The maximum or minimum value of the related function always occurs at a vertex of the feasible region. At times, not all three intersect. This is called, an, it is unbounded. Unbounded regions have either a maximum or a minimum. It does not have both. Okay, to see what a bounded region would look like, we're to graph this uh, system of inequalities. So after we've got them graphed, then we evaluate the function at each vertex. In order to do that, we use a table. So these are the vertices. The function that we were given was 3x minus 2y, and all we simply do is substitute in the x value and the y value into this function to see what might be the minimum or the maximum. Notice negative 14 is the smallest number. The largest number is 21, so we have a minimum of a negative 14, which is at negative 2, 4, and the maximum value is 21, and that's at the vertices 5, 3. So time for you to check your progress. So you'll need to first graph the inequality, then you'll need to evaluate the function, evaluate each of these vertices at this function, 4x minus 3y. So you'll need to fill a table out for that. Pause and do the work and then you can come back and check your answer. Very good. The maximum was 10, and that's at the vertices 4, 2, the vertex 4, 2, and the minimum's at a negative 11 when the vertex is at 1, 5. So this was a totally bounded feasible region. Now, when a system of inequalities does not form a closed region, it's called unbounded. So that's what we're going to look at now. We'll begin... Um, by doing the same thing we did on the last example, we're going to graph each of our inequalities and then we're going to evaluate into this function, each of our vertices. So we have a vertex at negative 2, 0 and 0, negative 2. There's only two points of intersection. So when we fill out our table, we only use these two points of intersection. The minimum values at a negative 6 or at 0, negative 2 and although negative 2, 0 is negative 4, it is not the maximum since there are other points that produce greater values. So what they're saying is you'll have only a minimum or a maximum, not both, and that you cannot assume there is no maximum if the feasible region is unbounded above the vertices. You have to test points um, to see if there, to determine if there is a minimum or a maximum. So check your progress. You could pretty much guess you're going to have an unbounded region. So you need to check to see if you have a minimum or a maximum. So pause the video for a moment, then come back and check your answer. Very good. You have a maximum at 6. There is no minimum. So the maximum of 6 where the vertices are 6, 0. 
Now we're going to look at optimization with linear programming. You might make a note of these seven steps. It'll help you as you're working through the problem. To optimize means to seek the best price or amount to minimize costs or maximize profits. This is often obtained with the use of linear programming. You might want to make a note of the keywords that are in this example so when we're running through it you'll know you'll remember what we're talking about and where we got those numbers from. You can always scroll back so that you can look at the problem. So first of all we need to figure out what variables we're going to use. We're going to let M equal the number of mowing jobs, P the number of pruning jobs. Then we need to write a system of inequalities. Since the number of jobs cannot be negative we're going to say that they have to be non-negative numbers. Mowing jobs take one hour, pruning jobs take three hours, and there are nine hours in which to do the jobs. So if we look at one hour to do mowing, three hours to do pruning, and we have to be less than or equal to nine. There are no more than two pruning jobs a day, so pruning has to be less than or equal to two. So we graph the system of inequalities. and then we're going to find the coordinates of the vertices of the feasible region. So we have four different vertices. We have to also write the function to be maximized. Okay, so the function we're going to use 40m plus 120p. We want to find the maximum value for this function. So we substitute the coordinates of the vertices into that function. So there are four coordinates. We substitute each m and p into the function and this is what we get. We select the greatest amount. There's two at 360 if you notice. 360 at three and two. This means that the company receives the most money with three mowings and two prunings or nine mowings and zero prunings. Time to check your progress and again you'll want to take a note of the key words that's in this problem so that you can work the um, problem on the next page. So pause the video for a moment to make a note of those keywords. So what combination of raking leaves and mulching will maximize the income? Why four mulching and zero raking jobs? Very good. Okay, you're ready to begin your assignment.